All right, welcome back forensic students. Today we are talking about forensic entomology, which is the use of insects that inhabit a decomposing body um, and the use of those insects to determine what we call postmortem interval, or sometimes it's abbreviated PMI. Postmortem interval is the time that has lapsed since an individual's death. And so investigators can use insect activity to help get an idea of time since death. So there are certain insects that are specialized to develop on bodies that are decomposing, and researchers have studied the life cycle and development of these insects and relayed this information to crime scene investigators and other forensic specialists. Uh, so they can use this scientific knowledge in death investigation. Um, insects can provide really detailed information about time since death, not necessarily time of death, because remember time of death is an exact time, this is more an estimation, so we should probably say time since death. Um, and there's a whole field de devoted to this called forensic entomology. Now, a forensic entomologist is a person who observes and records data about environmental conditions and insect activity around a body. Uh, they collect insect evidence from the body post-mortem, and then they use that to try to predict post-mortem interval. Now, although a lot of insects and arthropods inhabit a body after death or can inhabit a body after death, our focus today is going to be on the blowfly. So you can see here on this screen, as a corpse decomposes, all kinds of insects are going to show up. You got blowflies, um, beetles and yellow jackets and uh, coffin flies are going to show up. It's also depending dependent upon location. Uh, but today's focus is the blowfly. Uh, which is like the gold standard for forensic entomologists when they are trying to identify postmortem interval. Now, there are six stages that the blowfly goes through in its life cycle. So we're going to focus a little bit on those stages, and then we're going to tie in how those stages can be used uh, for forensic investigators who are trying to determine a postmortem interval. Now, forensic entomology uses two main methods to determine this information. One is going to look at the type of insects that are on and around a decomposing body, but the other is going to use the life cycle of certain insects to establish a time since death estimation. Again, it is an estimation. It is not an exact time. It's also dependent upon temperature and humidity, so all of those factors have to be taken into consideration as well. Now, if you are one of my students, you have this chart and you are going to fill out this chart at the very end of the lesson. So you may be tempted to fill in as we go through. Um, I recommend you waiting to the very end. I'm going to actually go through this specific chart with you. Uh, if you're not one of my students, you may want to take the time to pause the video now and just kind of sketch out this chart so that you have this information. Because this is important when we start trying to calculate postmortem interval, you're going to want this information in your notes. So um, pause the video now, copy this down, um, and hold on to it until the very end of the lesson, and we'll go through each stage and the size that each um the instars and maggots and blowflies are going to be at each stage. We're going to talk about the time frame that they spend in each stage and different characteristics that you'll see for each stage. All right, so this is sort of um, the life cycle. Again, if you type in the life cycle of a blowfly in Google, uh, you may or may not see this exact information. If you watch videos on YouTube about forensic entomology and the life cycle of a blowfly, you may or may not see this exact information. Um, this information is dependent upon environmental conditions like temperature and humidity, also access to the body. Uh, so a lot of different factors have to be considered. I'm just giving you the basic groundwork uh, for just basic information about forensic entomology and the life cycle of a blowfly. All right, so first, uh, blowflies have an incredible sense of smell. They're going to show up very quickly after death. Uh, and the female blowfly will lay anywhere from 150 to 200 eggs. And within a day, those eggs will hatch into first stage larvae. 
Um, and so you have eggs, they're, they're going to be very small. They're going to be laid in moist, warm environments. That's what the blowfly looks for um, when she's trying to lay her eggs. Uh, now, these larvae are very tiny. The first star, first instar larvae are very tiny, um, but they can range anywhere from one millimeter to 10 millimeters, um, which is still very tiny, but there's a, a wide range there in size. Uh, at this stage, they are very hungry and they're going to crawl into the recesses of the body and they're going to begin feeding. And within 24 to 48 hours, they're going to molt into the second stage maggot. And we call that instar two. Now, another 24 to 48 hours, they're going to molt into their final stage, which is the third stage. Um, often this is referred to as instar three, which you can see on your, um, on your screen. So this happens pretty quickly. Now, these instar three maggots are going to feed for about three to four days. Uh, this would be in warmer environments. It would take a little longer if the temperature or humidity were decreased. So we like to say anywhere from three to 12 days after death, um, the maggots will feed. When they are finished feeding, they're going to disperse away from the body and they're going to be looking for somewhere to pupate. Uh, so this is referred to as a maggot trail by forensic investigators. Uh, and I actually have a picture in a few slides over that I'll show you of a maggot trail. Um, but once the maggots crawl away from the body uh, and they, they're going to um, recess inside of the pupa, and the maggot's actually going to undergo metamorphosis and will emerge as an adult blowfly several weeks later. So the pupa case, cases will split open, the adult blowflies will emerge, uh, and one of the distinct characteristics that a young blowfly that's just hatched will display is crumpled wings. So investigators know um, that if they're working a crime scene and they see a blowfly that has crumpled wings, they know that that blowfly has just hatched uh, and so that will help them in determining post-mortem interval. All right, so you may want to pause your screen and just take a look at this. This is just a picture or an image of the um, life cycle of a blowfly. Uh, and you can see sort of the progression and the time frame there. These are some pictures of stage one. This is uh, at the egg stage. Uh, and a little bit of the instar one stage. Um, and you will notice here that these uh, blowflies are going to want to lay their eggs. They're looking for those moist areas. So common places that blowflies like to lay their eggs um, on a deceased body is in orifices, uh, such as the mouth or the nose, sometimes the groin, sometimes armpits, sometimes eyes. Uh, wounds, if there's a wound on the body, blowflies will let, uh, likely lay their eggs there. So all of those are common areas where blowfly eggs can be found. Now here's some images of um, instar 2 and instar 3 maggot activity. Uh, this specifically here, this picture is in the upper right hand corner, is instar 2. And I know this because if you see these two little um, posterior, posterior spiracles, that is an indicator that you have instar 2 maggot activity. Um, it's hard to see here, but if this, these maggots are instar 3, they will have three posterior spiracles. This is what I was talking about that's referred to as a maggot trail. Um, so after the eggs hatch and they go through uh, instar one and molt into instar two and instar three, after they're done feeding, they're going to crawl away from the body um, in the form of a maggot trail. And they're looking for um, a dry, dark place to uh, undergo metamorphosis. All right, so this is the chart that I was talking about um, at the beginning of the lesson. So you're going to want to pause this and fill this in because, again, this is going to be helpful when we start trying to determine time since death or postmortem interval uh, depending on blowfly life cycle stage. 
So um, before you pause the video, I do want to say that temperature and access to a body are the two most important factors that affect insect activity. So this information will differ depending on the temperature, um, the ambient temperature of the location where the body's found and the humidity um, at, the, at the location that the body's found. Typically high temperatures and high humidity are gonna reduce the development time for blowflies. So basically the process of moving from egg to maggot to blowfly will happen much faster in higher temperatures. Now since insect development is um, temperature dependent, postmortem interval is normally calculated by accumulated degree per um, degree day or accumulated degree hour. Uh, you may, your teacher may go further into that uh, and give you more information about that. Um, so if insects are able to easily access the body, the time frame of development will also be faster uh, than a case where a body is not easily accessible uh, to blow flies. So I did want to mention that before we end the lesson. So that ends forensic entomology and the life cycle of a blowfly. Make sure that you get this information down. I highly recommend you do some further research on this because we could go into so much more detail. But since this is a basic forensics course, we'll just leave it here. Um, and I will see you in the next lesson.